Well, good afternoon and welcome to five o'clock at Narrabeen Baptist Church. Uh, but of course, we're not really gathering and this is not at all what we wanted to be. And I don't know if you're as sick of it as I am and all of the weirdness of it. I mean, I'm here. It's not actually Sunday, is it really? It's really Friday when I'm recording this and you're at home and you've probably got Ugg boots on and relaxing back and we're not together. And I've got a selfie stick and I never wanted that. I never wanted to do one of these walking piece to camera things. But this is the way that we're gathering now and we're going to be well with one another for the next little while, praising God, hearing from his word. But more importantly, this week, we're starting Mission Monday. Month. So every week we're going to be focusing around a different aspect of mission and what it is to be still on God's mission, even in this strange time that we find ourselves now. So we're really glad that you've joined us and we'd love for you to stick around and enjoy uh, this time as we spend it together. Let's begin with uh, a word of prayer. Will you pray with me? Gracious Heavenly Father, you are the same yesterday, today and forever. And for that reason, uh, we want to thank you that even in the midst of a time that feels very different and strange to us, you are our constant. We want to pray, Lord, that as we gather now for this next period of time, uh, Lord, that you would encourage us, that you would spur us on. Lord, we want to thank you for you being a God who is always on mission. As we soon will hear from the, the Milligan family out at Ningen and later as Kieran comes to preach for us, as we sing together and reflect through your word, we pray, Lord, that you would be our guide and our comfort. We thank you for this time and we ask that you would be with us wherever we are. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good afternoon. It's great to be together as God's people. Join us as we sing a wonderful old hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. Control 
Hey, Richard, thanks for joining us today. Um, it's lovely to see you um, and hear from you. Um, yeah, just wanted to check in and see how you're doing and yeah, get, get a quick update. Um, so first of all, how are you and your family doing? Well, hi, hi to Narim Babs. Um, thank you so much for your care for us. Um, how are we going? We're, we're thankful. I think um, we're reflecting on our blessings. We didn't get to do our normal holiday thing over the school holidays, so we had a, a holiday at home. It was surprisingly pretty good. We, we've never had a tidy yard like what we've got now. <laughs> it's, um, um, it's true that the kids have been a bit stir-crazy, but I think we've been um, probably more than anything quite, uh, quite, reflect, quite a lot re um, reflecting on how blessed we are. Um, we felt pretty safe here in England, to be honest. Um, and, um, and we, you know, we've got a trampoline for the kids to jump on and we've got a comfortable house. So we've just been very mindful, I think, that even though it's been a bit, you know, like we can't leave the house and we can't do our normal things, that we're, we're feeling pretty blessed. How have you been trusting in God during this time? Uh, I think probably all of us. I certainly have felt a lot weaker. Um, I've felt like a lot of the programs and a lot of the um, the ambitions that we have for the year and all the plans and the camps and all the um, all the normal things of the year have sort of been kind of cut out from under us. And I I think that's shown up weakness. <laughs> um, probably we're all feeling a little weak than than we did before, it's thrown us onto the mercy of God in, in a way, in lots of different ways, whether we've lost um, our jobs, whether we've seen people that we love um, get ill, whether we're looking at the world. Um, so that, I just think there's a sense in, overall um, where, um, yeah, that, um, that weakness is really, really obvious. And so that sort of forces me and, and I think all of us to, to trust God in the midst of all this, and, and my, the question in my mind was, okay, I'm, I'm not able to do all the normal things that I feel I do to honour Jesus, um, in the same way. So how can I honour Jesus while I'm here? And so my my challenge was, how can I be honouring to Jesus, and how can I bring honour to His name, um, while I'm at home? And one of the answers for me was to stop being a bit of a wimp, and to actually do some stuff online, even though I know there's people out there who are much better. Uh, much more tech savvy, much cleverer than me. I was convicted that actually, Richard, you're the local guy. You're the one that the kids know, that the, the parents know, that the community knows. So honor Jesus by putting some stuff online that draws attention to who he is. And so it's a much more public thing than, than it is for me to just, to, you know, maybe run an Easter service where I know the majority of the people that are going to come are kind of friendly. Um, so anyway, for me, it was just like putting myself out there a bit um, to try something that I hadn't done before. And I've really enjoyed it because, um, yeah, it was a challenge for me, but it also showed me as soon as I did it, I started to make connections with old family members who aren't Christians, with, um, uh, with, with friends from the past, um, with local community members who would see the video and then share it amongst some of their family members. I thought, wow, well, this is really what I was hoping for, to be able to honour Jesus in this way. But I never, you know, so it's, so that was a, that was a step of faith for me, even though probably for some people it might just not feel that scary, but it felt scary for me. <laughs> so it's, um, it's quite interesting, I think, because um, whenever there's been a pandemic or just a tragedy in the world, normally churches will see a rise in attendance um, following things like that, where people, because of the, I guess the fact that it just puts our life back on the line. We realise not as strong as we thought, all the things we've built um, around ourselves as sort of our protective mechanisms that make us feel like we're okay, they sort of crumble around us and then um, our, our mortality and our, our, our real weakness becomes obvious to us. And so we, um, yeah, it's, it's often a time when people are more spiritually interested in and looking for answers, perhaps. Um, 
it's been funny for the church because we've not been able to have church. So like what we would maybe have normally have experienced with maybe some more people turning up. Well, that's not happening, but, um, but, but we're still the church. And I think, I think what, you're, what you've described and what, what I've experienced as well and, and what the people I've been connecting with are experiencing is that um, while, we're, while we're scattered, we're not able to gather, but we are still the people who have the hope of glory in our hearts. You know, we're still the people who, who have, have Jesus and, and we actually, out of all people, are people with hope. Mm. And so we should be the ones to be, you know, connecting that hope into people's lives. And, yeah, maybe it's online or maybe it's a phone call to a friend or maybe it's um, being a little bit bold online or, you know, whatever it is. We've been saying to people, pray, care and share. It's very simple. It's not rocket science. We didn't make it up. We just borrowed it from somebody else. But we're just saying, you know, pray for the people that you know. Um, look for opportunities to care for them. And um, as God gives the opportunity, share something of your hope in Jesus with them and see, see what God will do with that. Awesome. So, uh, and off yeah. the back of that, how would you encourage Narrabeen Baptist Church to continue engaging in God's mission? So I'd, I'd say the same thing. Um, think of someone that you maybe would like to reconnect with or that you could connect with. Spend a bit of time praying for them. Um, get, ring them up or, 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 or send them a message on Facebook or whatever it is. Just saying hello. Um, interact with them. Maybe you can find out about something in their life that's going on. You can maybe even, as a result of that, show some care, um, whether it's to just like a, like a listening ear, showing that you care, um, whether you can do something practical to actually help them. Um, maybe... Um, and maybe you can offer to pray for them. It's amazing. You, know, you can just say to someone, oh, look, that sounds like it's tough. Can I pray about that for you? Um, and always, always with an ear and an eye to saying, you know, how can I share something of the hope that I have in Jesus with this person? I think it's an amazing opportunity for all of us right now. Um, so I, ch- I challenge everyone in Arabine to think about who can I connect with that I maybe haven't that well before. Well, Richard, we want to say thanks for joining us. Thanks for, yeah, encouraging us and letting us know what's going on with your ministry and in your family. Um, yeah, we want to continue to partner with you, to pray for you, to be an encouragement to you as well. Um, so, yeah, continue to do God's amazing work um, as we think about what that means for us here at Narameen. So thanks for joining us. Thanks very much. Thanks, Narabeen. We really love you. Um, we're just so grateful. The fact that you support us enables us actually be here. Um, we wouldn't be here without you. So um, thank you for uh, being a blessing to us. And, and, and I guess through us, we can, um, we can continue in the happy service of reaching people for Jesus uh, here in Ningen. Hi there. My name is, is Robin Ann, Robin Ann Dixon. I'm one of our deacons and I'm here to um, share some prayer time with us today and one of my focus is on missions so today I'm also going to be including praying for our missionaries so let's pray. So dear Lord your word tells us that when two or more are gathered in your name then you are with us and so today we continue to meet in the strange circumstances which brought about by the virus that's plaguing the entire world, yet as we meet online, it's a great reminder of how we can still meet together as God's family, but apart. It's a great reminder too, that we're not a church because we gather in the church building at Grenfell Avenue in Narrabeen, but we're a church because we're all united spiritually through Jesus Christ. And so we acknowledge and give thanks that as your word tells us, as we gather together in your name today, that you are with us. And Father, I want to thank you for Richard Milligan, who we've just heard from today, and that he's willingly serving you at Ningen Baptist Church. How wonderful that Richard acknowledges that his and our experience with this virus highlights just how weak we are. We're powerless over what happens in our life but we can throw ourselves on God's mercy. What a great reminder. And for Richard, Ningen Baptist Church is only a small church. And Richard shared in the past actually that uh, there's a lot of hopelessness in Ningen. But it's exciting what Richard's goals are 
with his church. And they're simple, but powerful. To pray for people in the community, to care for people in the community, to share the hope that Jesus offers, connecting with people in the community, and to do all of this to the extent that they can. So what a gift we have in Jesus. And it's a gift that we all need to share. Through Jesus, we have hope. And we all must share this. So for Richard and his church, I pray. I pray for wisdom and boldness to connect to their community, to give hope in a place where they feel hopeless, to promote connections between the church family and the community. And Lord, we pray that you sustain Richard and his family and his Ningen Baptist Church and give them the opportunities to pray, to care and share. And Lord, we pray for the people of Ningen that their hearts and spirits are ready, that many will come to know Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. Lord, just as Richard is serving you in Ningen, I pray too that we each have a mission heart that we want to share the wonderful news of Jesus Christ and the salvation and hope he brings to our lives, and especially to those people who are not easy to reach and who don't have the opportunity to hear this message, perhaps because of geography of where they live or maybe because of their culture that cuts off opportunities. And Lord, help us, each one of us, to know how can we respond to your call to mission? Is God calling us somewhere? Or is he calling us to support someone who's serving as a missionary, perhaps through prayer, through financial support, through contact and encouragement? Maybe that's Richard or one of the others who will be sharing about in our May Mission Month. And in these crazy COVID-19 times, I pray for the very real challenges that we face in so many similar and different ways. But I encourage us all to take heart in the words of Romans 8 that we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. May we all look to the positives that are coming out of this time. May we all look to how we can be encouraging each other and let's follow Richard's encouragement to pray and care for others and connect with others who need those connections. Lord, we're encouraged by knowing that through everything, although we feel powerless, you are in control and in you, we have hope. Amen. Well, g'day kids. Uh, welcome to today's lesson. Today you have me, Professor Daniel Leach. Uh, I'm a professor of big words and I have a special interest project in words that end in shun and particularly uh, interested in 13 letter words that end in shun. And today we're going to be looking at one of those 13 letter words that ends in shun. And the reason that we're looking at big words at the moment is because, well, God's love for us is so big. So, so big. That there are some ways that God explained his love to us in the Bible. And one of those words uh, Professor Kieran Deegan looked at, us, looked at with us last week, that was the word redemption. Also one that I'm particularly interested in, as it's a shun word. Today's shun word is justification. 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 An example of this word justification in the Bible is Romans chapter 5 verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't do me much good on the screen there. Let me try to get that word off the screen. Ah, oh, there we go, on a piece of paper. Okay, justified. Hmm, but what does it mean? At this point, it's probably worth recognizing that I know justified and justification are not the same word, but they come from the same word, and I like shun words. Anyway, back to the video. Hmm. Oh, actually, there's a definition on the back, there you go. To be declared right, in God's eyes. Justified means to be declared right in God's eyes. Hmm. So it's actually kind of like courtroom language. A judge would stand in front of a court and they would declare somebody innocent or right based on the evidence. Oh, actually, you know what? 
There's a good video that will help explain this. Let's watch this video. There once were two little boys who were best friends. We'll get you a bit closer. Okay. Two little boys who were best friends. They played together, went to school together. They even went to university together. They were inseparable. Until their careers took them in very different directions. One became a lawyer, the other a criminal. As one was promoted to a judge, the other disappeared deeper and deeper into a life of crime. Eventually, the criminal was caught and sent to trial. On the fateful day in the courtroom, he came face to face with his old best friend, the judge. And so, the judge had a dilemma. He loved his friend, but he had to do justice. And so, he fined him the appropriate penalty for the offence. It was a huge fine. There was no way he could ever afford to pay what he owed. But then, the judge took off his robes, went down, stood with his friend, and wrote out a cheque covering the cost. He paid the penalty himself. It's a pretty good cartoon, isn't it? But what God has done for us is even more amazing than that, what that judge did for his friend. See, the debt was way bigger. It was our debt of sin. And the evidence, well, it was stacked up against us. And the love that he demonstrated was far greater because it cost him his son. And the result? Total forgiveness made available to you and to me. It would be just as if I'd never sinned. Ooh, that, that was clever, wasn't it? Just as if I had justified. Just as if I had. Hmm. I told you I'd done some research into this stuff. Now the question is, how do we get justified? And our memory verse tells us, therefore, since we have been justified, how? Through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we get justified through faith. And faith means trusting in God and his word and turning from our sinful behavior. So through faith in Jesus, we are justified in God's sight, which means we're declared right. And that concludes the lesson for today. So the homework is... Nah, I'm just kidding. There's no homework. See you next week. Hey church, a couple of updates for you. Firstly, a finance update. We are currently giving at 98% to budget, and that's a weekly average of $12,451. So thank you for your continued support of the gospel ministry here at Narrabeen. Uh, the details for our giving account is up on the screen now. So if you wish to contribute, uh, you can take note of those. Uh, moving on to our annual general meeting, which is coming up on Wednesday night, the 13th of May at 7.30 p.m. We'll send out a Zoom link to you. And if you are watching this service on DVD or um, some other format because you don't have internet, don't worry, you can also call in. We'll give you a uh, number to call from your mobile or your landline so that you can join the meeting. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's AGM coming up on the 13th of May. And we'll also be bringing forward a nomination for the Deacon for Finance. Uh, and that nomination is Mitch Adaman. Uh, on that, if you wish to become a member and vote on matters like this, please talk to one of our pastors in the next couple of days. Uh, moving on, uh, I just wanted to let you know that we continue to monitor the government's uh, regulations and updates regarding physical distancing. Uh, as you know, on Friday, uh, some of the restrictions were lifted, which means that a maximum of two adults can enter a household now, which is uh, great, but that doesn't mean that we will be able to gather together as a church on a Sunday service. Although we have been talking about how this might impact uh, how some of the people in our church watch the services. 
especially for those who are unable to watch them live on a Sunday. Uh, perhaps you are that person or you know someone like that. Maybe you could think about uh, inviting them over and helping them to watch the services. Anyway, we'd love to be able to help you in any way we can. So if that's you, please uh, reach out. Uh, we're also looking at what this might mean for NBC Care moving forward, but no major decisions have been made yet. Uh, and finally, I just wanted to remind you that May Mission Month study booklets are available for download now. There's a link in the description of this video. Uh, and this is really useful because for the entire month of May, we're looking at mission and these study booklets help us do that uh, throughout the week as well. So thanks Travis for preparing them. Uh, you can download them now. Uh, thank you for your time. Now I'll hand over to Daniel and Monica with the Bible reading. Hello everyone, we're the Valleys from Dallas, Texas. I'm Monica and this is Daniel. Um, most of you already know us, but we just wanted to introduce ourselves. And you also know that we have three kids, Alan, Jonah, and Sydney. They're here and they send their love. Hi everyone, um, I'm going to read this evening's passage today from the book of Mark, the Gospel of Mark. Chapter 7, verse 24. So, here we go. Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it, yet he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an impure spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek born in Syrian Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. First, let the children eat all they want, he told her. For, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he told her, for such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. She went home and found her child lying on the bed and the demon gone. We hope God bless his word and hope to see you soon. We love you guys. Bye. Bye. My parents are soft when it comes to kids. Uh, they weren't with me, but with my kids, they're just walkovers. As mum and dad, they were tough, uh, but as fam and papa, as we call them, uh, they've undergone some sort of transformation, and my girls can do the wrong thing all day. They can talk smack to them. Uh, they can uh, just trash their house. Uh, they can ignore them, do whatever they want, but then they have the audacity to ask for an ice cream or a lolly or, or, or a present, and every time without fail, they get it. Uh, uh, they, they know they don't deserve it, but they ask anyway because they know that their grandparents' love is so great and no request will be denied. My girls know this, so they're never afraid to ask. And the passage we just read shows us something similar. And this is what it is. We are undeserving of Jesus' love, but he will not turn anyone away who comes to him with humble faith. Say it again. We are undeserving of Jesus' love, but he will not turn away anyone who comes to him with humble faith. Let's, say, let's see that in the passage. Really, it jumps out at us in Jesus' interaction with this woman from Syrian Phoenicia. Uh, and this is an action which shocks us when we read it. And so it should. It's quite unusual. The woman comes to Jesus asking for help. Uh, he seemingly calls her a dog, uh, refuses, but then is persuaded to give her what she came for. Unusual, right? Uh, what's going on here? Well, well, let's follow it through. In verse 26, she comes to Jesus and begs him to drive a demon from her daughter. And so Jesus, in verse 27, says, First, let the children eat what they want, for it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Seems terribly harsh. Uh, but Jesus is replying in like a, a mini parable. In this, the bread represents the gifts of Jesus. The children represent Israel, uh, God's people. And the dogs represent Gentiles. 
Actually, Gentiles were regularly called dogs uh, by the Jews of the day. Uh, but Jesus softens the term dogs. Uh, and the, the word here he uses isn't like dirty street dogs, but more like family dogs. Puppies, those that hang around the table at home. But still, dogs nonetheless. And, and no one wants to be called a dog. But what Jesus is saying here is that he has a particular mission to Israel. Physically, there's only so much of him to go around, and he has a short amount of time to do it, and it wouldn't be right to neglect the children he was sent to feed by giving their bread to those who aren't the children. And yes, it is true that Jesus' ministry was primarily to Israel. He, he didn't travel extensively, uh, and his interaction with Gentiles were profound and beautiful and amazing, uh, but, but pretty uncommon. Yes, God's mission includes all people. Not just the Jews, and we see that throughout the rest of the Bible. But Jesus' mission while on earth was primarily to the lost sheep of Israel. Whilst offering glimpses of what, of what was to come through the mission of the church on earth. Now, I don't think Jesus is being cruel here. Uh, I think he's using this parable to draw the woman in so she has a chance to demonstrate her radically humble faith say that again, he's using this mini parable to draw the woman in so she has a chance to demonstrate her radically humble faith. Well, Jesus knew he was going to heal the child, but it seems like he was allowing her voice to be heard as an example to her and as an example to us and all reading this passage that God honours a humble faith. And how did she show this humble faith? Well, let's look at her response. Verse 28. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. It's amazing. She doesn't complain that Jesus has treated her unfairly. She doesn't demand better or appeal her rights as a human being to get what she deserves. No, no, no. In fact, she actually admits to being a dog, doesn't she? In other words, she admits to being unworthy to receive the gifts that Jesus brings. But in this we see the magnitude of her, of her faith that while she realises that she is unworthy, she still asks for it. It's like she's saying, Jesus, I know I'm not worthy of you, but I know that your love and mercy extend beyond my unworthiness. So I'm asking, Jesus, allow some of your abundance to overflow to an unworthy puppy like me. And it does. Jesus honours her faith. Verses 29 and 30, he told her, for such a reply you may go. The demon has left your daughter. She went home and found her child lying on the bed and the demon gone. This woman showed radically humble faith by admitting that she wasn't worthy of Jesus' attention but called for it anyway because of her understanding of his great mercy and power. And what's remarkable about this story is that it comes right after he was confronted by the Pharisees about being defiled and unclean for not following their ceremonial cleaning laws. In chapter 6, verse 15, Jesus sums up his argument against the Pharisees by saying this, Nothing outside a person can defile them by going into them. Rather, it is what comes out from a person that defiles them. He's using this to have a go at the Pharisees uh, and the, the evilness of their hearts, as Daniel showed us last week. But then he immediately goes to an unclean Gentile town and talks to an unclean Gentile woman. And what comes out of her is not the defiled self-righteousness of the religious Pharisees, but the pure undefiled, radically humble cry of faith. And this unworthy woman receives Jesus' mercy and grace. And so what will you take away from this passage? I can think of three things. The first one's this. You'll come to Jesus. The picture we get from this story is that Jesus will not turn anyone away. We're all equally unworthy. If we come to him empty-handed, understanding that we don't deserve him, yet ask anyway, he'll welcome us. 
Jesus promises a spiritual healing greater than what he gave this woman's young daughter. He promises to cleanse you from your sin, to remove God's anger from you, to remove all the evil from your heart and to give you a new life centered in relationship with God. Life as it was meant to be, empowered by his powerful spirit. And so if you're not a Christian and you're watching this, listen, I want you to think about this. Jesus beckons you. He will not turn you away. He has the key to the life you need. He has the key to forgiveness and relationship with God. He has the key to rebirth and cleanliness. Come to him. Confess your sin. Ask for his mercy. We would love to engage with you over that and talk with you. So please click on one of the links below so that we can be in contact with you and and walk this path with you so that you may come to know Jesus and find his healing and his mercy and his life. Secondly, uh, this passage causes us to be more thankful in our lives. See, when you approach God with pride in your your heart, uh, with pride in your own cleanliness or your own good deeds, then you're going to expect certain things from him. And you're going to be unhappy and restless until you get them. But when you come with a humble faith, you realize that you don't deserve anything from God except rejection and punishment because of your sin. Understanding that we deserve nothing helps us to be thankful for what we have, doesn't it? If you are a Christian, you've been brought into a relationship with God, even though you didn't deserve it. Jesus died to forgive you and your eternity is sealed. You are loved, you're forgiven, you're adopted, uh, you're secure, even though you shouldn't be. You don't deserve it. And as Paul says in Ephesians, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. We will live a life of abundant thanks, knowing that we have all we need. We won't approach God with a sense of entitlement, but with a sense of gratitude. And thirdly, Knowing this story is going to spur us on to continue God's mission. When we truly understand that we don't deserve the salvation we received, we'll passionately share the truth with others. Uh, Remember, we're we're Gentiles, uh, or many of us, no doubt. We're little household dogs who, who have been fed by the master of the house. How selfish, how self centered not to share that good news with others. Today is the start of May Mission Month, and I want you to use the message of this passage to encourage you to share the good news. God's table overflows to anyone who comes to him hungry. So go and call others to the feast. No one's beyond his reach, because remember, we're all unworthy. What did we learn today? We learn that we are undeserving of Jesus' love. But he will not turn away anyone who comes to him in humble faith. So one, come to him in humble faith for forgiveness. Two, be thankful for what you have. Live out of gratitude, not entitlement. And three, go and share this great news with others. God's table is overflowing. Bring them to the feast. Let's pray. Jesus, we come before you empty-handed, knowing that we bring nothing but our own sin and brokenness, but we ask anyway. We ask you to forgive, to cleanse, to refresh, to renew, because we know that you are merciful, and that even though we are dogs, you allow us and welcome us and beckon us to feast on the overflows of your abundant mercy and grace. We come before you today to do just that. May the faith of this woman inspire our faith. And may the knowledge of your mercy and grace and love inspire us to come to you, to be thankful and to share this wonderful truth with others. We pray it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Charlie, Maddie and I would now like to lead you in the singing of the Creed. The Creed is an amazing song. 
It just sings out those truths that we know about Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. So much around us is shifting sand, but Jesus can be relied upon. So let's sing this together.
Well, we're about to finish our time together and um, well, the noise in the background is the garbage truck that comes around on a Friday afternoon and it smells like someone's had prawns. Um, well, everything is a bit less than ideal, right? But as we've been reminded in our time together today, he is a God who's on mission and still at work and we just give great thanks that we can be part of that. Um, if you started watching this service around five o'clock on Sunday, then please join us after the service. We've got a Zoom meeting that's set up. The link will appear below the screen. We'd love for you to join us. There've been great times in order to chat and encourage and pray with one another. Um, but if you want to respond in other ways, you want to reach out and chat and talk through some of the things that we've discussed this afternoon or things that have been laid upon your heart, or if you've got needs and you need some care, uh, we would love to hear from you. Um, again, thanks. It is great to be part of this church fellowship. And we want to encourage you to continue on being on God's mission, making disciples of Jesus Christ, for that is what he has left for us to do. And the work, the mission, it doesn't change. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, uh, be with us as we move into this evening and into the rest of this week. We thank you that you know us, you love us, and you have provided for us. And we ask, Lord, that you would show us how we might be faithful and humble in the way that we might serve you. We ask, Lord, that you would set us on the task of mission and what that would look like in our lives. We ask your continuing blessing upon the Milligans and uh, all those serving in hard and distant places. Heavenly Father, go with us now. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless and we'll catch up with you soon. See you later. Have a great week. Bye.